Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. It is a Lolita vlog featuring, once again, another visit to the art gallery. There are a few new exhibits that I'm really excited to showcase for this video, so let's get started. This art gallery doesn't open until 11 a.m., so I spent a really chill morning with Timbit. He was very mischievous this morning and just wanted to jump all over the bed, getting into my shots, usual cat things. It is unusually warm for a winter, so for today I decided to wear a simple casual coordinate with black socks because I knew I was going to get some dirt on them eventually from the outside. I am wearing one of my favorite Alice in the Pirates prints with a lovely Innocent World three-quarter sleeve blouse and seriously this is one of my go-to coordinates whenever I don't want to think about coordinating anything. So as usual, I picked up Koneji and then we headed off to the gallery. But before that, we have to obviously stop by for coffee. This coffee shop is new to me and it's called Stop Gap Coffee. It is a coffee shop located inside a historic house. And the interiors for this place is on point. That wallpaper, great. The pink tiles, wonderful. Everything was super cute here and was very on trend. The space is a little small, but the drinks here were really lovely and it was a really good time. And I highly recommend checking it out if you're ever in the area. Of course, when going to the art gallery downtown, you'll have to park at City Hall. Look at this City Hall building. Mm, lovely. We had to take some fun photos here, of course. So the first exhibit that we checked out is called Conjured Images, which is all about spirit photography from the turn of the 20th century. The exhibit features early examples of photos that features extras or ghostly apparitions. Some people believe that these figures were spirits of dead loved ones and claim to recognize friends and family. The other party blames trickery or common phenomenon like double exposure. Spirit photography was incredibly popular at the turn of the century because of the changing of technology and the rise of the spiritual movement. This was just a really fun photography exhibit to look through. I always love seeing little ghostly apparitions here and there. The next exhibit on the main floor is Beholden. These are the new acquisitions for the art gallery. The AGA's permanent collection began in 1925 and it has grown to over more than 6,300 works of art that have been acquired over the decades through donations from private and corporate collectors, along with direct purchases from living artists supported by endowed funds and specially allocated grant sources. Building a collection like this is central to the art gallery's core mission and mandate. I think it's really interesting to see what sort of art that a gallery would deem valuable enough to have in their permanent collections. And there are a lot of interesting pieces that have joined the permanent collection.
Also on the main floor is Dean Drever's Pass the Hat. This is a 16 feet totem pole that's made out of 10,686 pieces of paper. And the plaque said it was a documentation of the strength of the Haida First Nation while addressing its fragility due to colonial practices and repression. Not gonna lie, it's really big and very impressive. Heading up to the second floor of exhibits. So the third main exhibit is called Road Trip, and it features almost 100 works of art from the AGA collection that represents more the iconic images of a road trip. Things such as vehicles, highways, hotels, landscape vistas, and popular destinations. It includes a variety of media, and it takes us on a drive through scenes from both our past and present. This was a really fun exhibit to peruse through and see all of the mediums used and the textures. And this exhibit really reflected the themes that it was going for. It was wonderfully curated, and I very much enjoy the photography portion of it because they really captured the essence of a road trip. And then after that, we headed off to the third floor for Dean Drever's main exhibit called In Black and White. And just as a side note, this exhibit is quite triggering. It utilizes a lot of oppressive imagery. The primary message that I took from this exhibit was that while black and white can be seen as both positive and negative, right and wrong, in the work, black and white must coexist just as an oppressor shares the same space with the oppressed. And us as a viewer find ourselves positioned in that imaginary space between the black and the white in a place where we can create the shades of gray. Once again, it is such a powerful exhibit that I don't think I'm truly able to capture it or fully speak about it. It. And to follow along with the theme of In Black and White, they also featured Esma Muhammad's To Play in the Face of Certain Defeat. Once again, it is an exhibit that centers the issues around racial marginalization, especially in the sports industry. It was a really interesting exhibit, and seeing it after Dean Drever's In Black and White exhibit felt like the art gallery was really trying to drive a point home. I really wasn't expecting this video to really end on a negative note. I really think it's important to view art through our lens and how we interact with the world. So at the end, we celebrated with some soul fried chicken and that was really, really good fried chicken. Korean fried chicken just hits different, you know what I mean? Thank you for watching today's video. I hope it wasn't as rambly as I thought it was. I hope you're able to take away something from the art in this video. Let me know if you've been to the art gallery recently and what you were able to see. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!